to an eight-year term. Uh, she's also been the director of corporate relations for Wayne State. Are you still doing that? Okay, and doing that. Uh, and a spokesperson for Congressman David Bonnier, as for previous, uh, which got her very involved in politics uh, as a spokesperson. Also, she was a political organizer for the Michigan Democratic Party and for the AFL-CIO. She is on the board of the Ruther Library Advisory Board, uh, Automation Alley's STEM Education Committee, Health and Neighborhoods of Detroit, or Healthy Neighborhoods in Detroit, pardon me, the National Association of State Board of Educators, their edu they set education policy, and the past president of the National Women's Political Caucus of Michigan. Um, she is a uh, uh, political science graduate of the University of Michigan. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention Dr. Golden is also a graduate of the University of Michigan, both undergrad and a PhD. Uh, and, uh, Sorry, MD. MD, pardon me, pardon me. And uh, uh, Cassandra got her master's and is working on her PhD in communications at Wayne State. So everybody we've heard tonight is a graduate of Michigan-based universities. And I think we got them all covered. Michigan State, Alabama, all of them. Wayne State. So uh, Cassandra lives here in Rochester with her husband, David Williams, and her two dogs, Bailey and Jackson, who were not able to attend tonight. <laughs> so uh, Cassandra, come on up. Invitation um, and thank you all for, for being here and sticking it out tonight and Dr. Golden for the, the nice remarks that you made and we certainly on the State Board of Education agree that we need more work too so thank you very much for that. Um, my name is uh, Cassandra Albridge and I'm running for the State Senate and the reason I'm running is because Michigan is at a pivotal moment right now and I think new leadership will bring new results and new, renewed prosperity to Michigan but only if we get our priorities straight. And we need to do that. Um, sorry, so this year, 30 of 38 state senators will be term limited. 30 of 38. Some see this as a disaster waiting to happen. I see it as an opportunity. I think it's a great opportunity to change the culture in Lansing and to put people in Lansing who are actually going to make the real structural changes that need to happen to move us forward. Can we win this seat? I know there's a lot of talk about this is a Republican-leaning seat and a Democrat doesn't have a chance, but let me say, in the words of Barack Obama, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yeah. Yes, we can. In 06, they said we couldn't do it. Oh, we can. And let me tell you why. Because, first of all, the numbers are treading in our favor. Um, in 06, Granholm lost by 1%. And last year, Barack Obama actually won the district. So we're moving in the right direction. And the political landscape is in our favor, too. Right now, we have six candidates on the other side who are vying for the, the primary. And that is six individuals who are falling over themselves to be the most extreme conservative they can be. <laughs> Do you know how much leverage and space that gives us to fill when they get all the way over to the right? So the political landscape's in our favor. And we can win because we have the ideas. No is not an idea. Yeah. <laughs> we bring things to the table. And we're also the side that, that proves that we can work across the lines to get things done. And I can win because I've always already proven that I can do that. The State Board of Education is a partisan board. But once we're on that board, we work as a cohesive group because it's in the best interest of the students in the state. Not because it's in our political best interest, but because our priorities are straight and we're working for the people of the state of Michigan, not for ourselves. So, what are the issues that we're looking at this year? Well, first of all, let me give you a little bit of my background. I grew up in about an hour and a half from here in a town called Yale. Do you know where Yale is? No one knows where Yale is. <laughs> called Yale and I grew up in the quintessential paycheck to paycheck family and we had a health crisis in my family and basically lost everything. We were one of those families that you read about all the time. For me, education was the way out. It was the only way out for me. I'm the first in my family to go to college 
and I have since earned three degrees, and I'm working on the fourth right now. So, you know, education was very important to me, but the state we're in right now, the educational opportunities are getting harder and harder to come by. And this is happening in a time when, for better or worse, our economy is moving from a manufacturing base to a knowledge-based economy. And I have to tell you, we are being left behind. And we cannot have that. So we need to make investments in the state. The state spends money. We need to make sure we spend money in the right things that are going to create jobs and economic opportunities. One of those things is higher education. I work, I work, I've worked in higher ed for the last nine years. And I can tell you, I work for a research university. All that research happening at Wayne State University and U of M and MSU, that equals jobs. Because that research co becomes companies, and companies hire employees. And yet, over the last 10 years in the state, we have consistently de-invested in our higher education system. To the point where right now we are 49th out of 50 of all of the states in increases in higher education um, uh, support. We are being left behind. The other thing, you know, another thing for economic development are these business incubators. I work with uh, Tech Town at Wayne State University. The whole point of a business incubator is to help entrepreneurs and small businesses become successful and hire more people. So why not invest in them? Why should they have to go to private sources to get funding when we have a, a state that needs these jobs right now? And the second item, I think hand in hand, jobs and, and education go hand in hand. And you know, I've already talked about higher education. We need to look at early childhood education in the state. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> study after study has shown that small investments, even small investments, in early childhood education pay huge dividends down the road. They, we can show that if you invest in early childhood education, 10, 15 years from now, the state will save money in things like crime and crime prevention, substance abuse, uh, you know, children going into special education, public assistance, all of these things we start saving money on. But it's an investment, and it requires an investment. But last year, under the state budget, when everything was going down in Lansing, the first thing on the chopping block was early childhood education. It was number one. It's a short-term fix with a long-term implication, and we can't keep doing that. We have to start investing in our young people in the state and in education. It's the only way we're going to grow, grow our way out of the current economic situation we're in. Um, finally, something else that, that um, you know, I think we need to look at, we need to put people in Lansing who are willing to make reforms to the way we do business in the state at the state level. Um, you know, we have a tax structure that does not work. And right now at the State Board of Education, we're holding hearings on educational funding and financing in the state because we are in a crisis. But you can't divest education funding from funding from everything else. They're all interconnected. And what we're learning is that the, the, the tax structure we have right now will not rebound when the economy rebounds. It's a structural problem that has to be overcome. Even if tomorrow we had unemployment drop down to, say, 3%, our, we would still have billion-dollar deficits because that's how our tax structure is set up. We have to do something about this. We can't let it go anymore. So I'm running for the State Senate, and I hope you'll join me because I plan on having some fun in the next few months. And I'd love for you to be there with me. Um, and, and, you know, I think we've got a real shot here. And so I hope that you will join the campaign. I did bring um, forms. If you want to be on the campaign mailing list or the website, please put your name on one of them and we'll add you to the list. Um, but the bottom line is, this is doable, this is our year, and I'm really excited. Yay. Thank you.